All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this meeting started despite the technical uh, glitches going on. Um, hopefully everybody can see me very well. Mark's got a background turned on, so I can't see everybody. Um, so uh, tonight's meeting is going to kind of be a um, evolution slash how to modernize your older machines. Um, so let me go ahead and get some things going here. There it is. All right. So some of this stuff is going to um, apply to uh, PCs and to laptops. And uh, I'm going to mainly work on the laptop side, and Ed's going to do more on the uh, the PC side. But again, a lot of this will be shared, right, Ed? I believe right. that's what we were doing. Okay. All right. So we're going to start off with one of the most basic things. Most people know what what this picture is showing. It's a SATA drive, which is actually kind of outdated now. <laughs> um, hard to believe, isn't it? Um, so we've actually moved on to something called uh, M2 type. Um, uh, sorry. Let me see here. Sorry. So not M2 drives. All right, so this, now there's gonna be some links to Newegg in here. Just to tell you right now, I am not promoting Newegg. I am not associated with Newegg, anything of that nature. They just have a lot of the adapters and stuff that we can use. So the um, latest and greatest right now that most uh, um, devices are using are called M2 drives, M2 solid state drives. And as you can see, that's an older one. That's a SATA drive. And um, it's not much bigger than a stick of desktop RAM. It's actually a little bit smaller. Um, uh, oh, freaking pop up. So that's um, the latest and greatest right now that everybody's using. So let's get back to my thing here. So SATA was like the last generation of, of devices that we had. And of course, this is when I started getting into computers and stuff. We were using the old IDE. And of course it used the ribbon cable. We all remember having to put the jumpers in and setting the slave and the master, et cetera, et cetera. Nowadays, all that's pretty much uh, software driven. Uh, we don't have to worry about playing that game anymore. Uh, then we had some compact flash storage um, that used the, uh, the older technology like they did here. And then of course we move into the SATA. And then that picture didn't come through. Um, the micro SATA. Why aren't my pictures coming through? But now we're, we're to the um, M2 drives. Yes, sir. I'm having the same problems with my stuff, with my pictures trying to come through. Yeah. And now they got this new, new one here, which I haven't seen yet, that is using SATA 3.2 specifications. And here's the new connectors. They're calling them SATA Express. I don't know too much about this. This is kind of the first time I've seen that. Um, and I believe what it's going to do is it's going to allow the um, SATA drives to use the PCI Express connection is the way it's reading here. 
so you don't um so you'll get the faster connection you'll be able to get faster connections with the two and a half inch drives because right now the two and a half inch sata drives are pretty much limited at 500 read and write capabilities whereas the m2 SATAs, these kind of things there are they are rated um you know three the top of the line gaming runs will run 3500 read and 3000 write sometimes 35 and 35 and of course they go down in steps um you get the older m2s that are based on the sata connection still and they use the sata bus and you're limited to the 500 read 500 write um so this is gen 3 a gen 3 gives you these kind of speeds, but the Gen 4s, see if there, it's a Gen 4. The Gen 4 ones will actually give you 7,000 plus read and write capabilities. And these are what a lot of the, the desktops and laptops are running these days. Um, uh, the gaming laptop that I just bought, um, it has one M2 connection, and then it had, which is kind of rare, it had the option to add a two and a half inch drive. So I am running a uh, fourth gen uh, M2 uh, drive in a uh, three third gen slot. But what that all that does is it limits the fourth gen to whatever the top speed of that slot is. So we're talking 3,500 read and 3,500 write. And it runs cooler because it doesn't have to work as hard. So say you have a, um, an older connection. So you wanna bring some of your, your newer machines up to some of these newer standards. Or you have an old drive that you wanna connect. So like I said, I'm not, Part of New Egg. This is just showing examples here. Um, so you can actually, um, they sell uh, adapters now. Um, for example, this one here, the red one. This one you would actually connect to a hard drive, and then you can connect it to a. Um, uh, let's see if it should say. Yeah, you can connect it to an old uh, IDE cable. And it's got the jumpers here for the slave and the master. And um, so you can uh, add SATA capabilities to an older machine. Uh, but again, you're gonna be limited to your bus speed, but it will run that bus speed to its top. Then you have the opposite here. And what this does is this connects directly to the motherboard or your connectors and it turns your IDE drive into a SATA drive. So um, you can use, uh, this is a two and a half inch, they do make for the three and a half of course. Um, so you can, um, use those old drives in a newer machine, you know, and run it that way. Now you have to make sure that um, uh, your machine is capable of running this. You might end up running into driver issues and things of that nature. Okay. And then of course, if you want to, um, turn your M2, this is really nice because these I actually used something like this one here. I didn't pay this much for it because there's two different kinds. Uh, there, there's two different kinds of the, the M2 drives. The older ones work on the old SATA bus speed. The new ones, the MVME, which my mind is suddenly blaking on what that means, Give me just a second here. Uh, 
here we go. So it stands for non-volatile memory express drives. Um, so this one here, this adapter works for the, um, can work with the NVE drives and it also works with the MSSC or the MMC, the EMMC drives. It's a little more expensive, but you can use, uh, like I said, I, when I upgraded my um, gaming machine, it had a, uh, a um, 128 gig, gigabyte drive in it, which was just terrible. So I bought an adapter um, that uh, I can use now, like this one, and I put it in an old netbook. So it now has an SSD drive and it cost me 10 bucks. This one does a lot more than the 10 buck one that I have. So that's one way you can adapt it to an older machine using the, M -M the uh, M2 connections. Or like I said, if you upgrade the, um, uh, you pick up one of the laptops now and it only has 128 gigabyte, well, you can buy an adapter for 10 bucks or 20 bucks and throw it in another machine and use it. And you can actually buy enclosures to uh, use as uh, USB drives if you want. All right. Sorry, I got to move these tabs back and forth because um, it's blocking it. All right, so the little benef the benefits of the MV here, the MV Express, uh, it's two times faster than the AHCI drivers that like SATA uses. Um, the input output uh, operations can exceed 1 million um, uh, operations per second, depending on the drive. And um, they also communicate directly with the CPU, so they don't have to go through a bus anymore. So here they're talking about some of the, the SATA versus the PCI uh, Express. SATA 1 was 150, SATA 2 was 300, SATA 3 was 600, but most of them run at 500. And then you have the PCIe Gen 2, which was basically a SATA drive turned into that uses the PCI and it was limited to 500. The Gen 3, this one says 1000, um, but I've seen them higher. And then the Gen 4 is right here. And then they talk about the um, uh, the operating systems, how they communicate with the storage uh, devices. Uh, AHCI was designed for hard drives and spinning disk technology. MVME was designed for SSDs with flash technologies. Then the AHC has one command queue and the MVME has 64 command commands per queue. Then the sending is 32. And then it's like almost infinite speed there. Um, the AHCI uses a lot of CPU cycles, whereas the SATA is a lot less slower, lower. Latency, you can see six microseconds versus 2.8. And then it goes through a SATA controller on the AHCI, whereas the NVMe talks to the CPU. And the uh, operations per second, is limited up to 100K and 1 million here. These are the different forms that you can get the M2. The most common that you're gonna see is this one here, the 2280, which is uh, 22 millimeters uh, by eight. And, um, so there you go on that. I don't know too much about the server stuff, but you can see they got some different ones there. And then there's some pictures. So most new laptops that you get, the thin ones, if it's not built into it, um, it's probably gonna have a PCI Express like this. And it can actually make a world of difference. We're talking 
it, it's an even more noticeable difference between when you went from a spinner drive to a solid state drive. If you have a PCI-3 low end um, uh, um, MVME drive, it only does a thousand cycles and you put a, one that does 3000 in there, you're gonna notice a difference. They say you don't, but I, I have noticed a difference personally. All right, so kind of moving on here. All right, this is one that most people forget and it, it, and it can make a world of difference, um, especially with connecting, security, you know, we all have big security. And these are things that people forget. And, um, you know, you're talking better security here. And this is your Wi-Fi cards. So we're just gonna scroll down to the chart here. Oops, let me move this box. All right, so the first Wi-Fi, and this was kind of an interesting read for me. First Wi-Fi Zero, 802.11, came out in 1997 at a 2.4 gigahertz um, uh, frequency. And 2.4 is mo one of the most common ones. Then they went to the B, which is about when I came into the game with, the, with uh, Wi-Fi. That was in 99. Then Wi-Fi 2, which was A, which they kind of skipped over A and went straight to, I didn't see a whole lot of A. It usually pretty much went from B to G and A was a five gigahertz. You've seen a lot more of the G that came out in 2003 with the 2.4 than the A. And then of course they went to N in 2008, AC in 2014, Wi-Fi 6, um, in 2019, uh, right now, AC and AX are one of the most common ones right now. Uh, you're, you're, you see a lot more of the AC and AX, but AC is, AX is starting to come in a lot stronger. And just as it's coming in, it's already outdated. Um, so you're gonna see a lot more AC and AX machines. Um, and then, of course, Wi-Fi 6E, which is the newest one, and that just came out in 2020. And um, you're, you can find Wi-Fi 6 um, uh, routers. They're slowly dropping in price. The 6Es are out, but you're going to pay almost $100 to $200 more for a 6E. And to, to be honest, there's not a whole lot of systems right now that have 6E. You can buy the cards, but um, uh, most systems are going to be in AC or uh, AX. The laptop that I have that was produced, it was built in uh, June of last year, has, still has an AC card in it, which I have updated to a 6. Uh, the laptop I'm speaking to you with right now, um it had a uh wireless n card in it um because it's a uh six gen um uh well maybe it had an ac card i don't remember it either had an n or an ac card and it's a six gen i7 processor and it had a one terabyte um spinner drive in it and this thing crawled uh now has a one terabyte ssd 16 gigs of ram it had six and I've updated the card to a Wi-Fi 6 card. Um, so the question is now upgrading. Again, new egg, just using this because they have a big wide list here. All right, so of course you can get yourself um, a uh, USB adapter. If you um, can't, you know, if you have an old HP that um, uh, is what has what they call a whitelist Wi-Fi card adapter in it, um, which means that um, 
you can't replace the Wi-Fi card in it. I picked up, an, my sister was throwing away an old netbook and I picked it up and I took a, a uh, bought one of those $10 adapters and had 128 M2 drive. I threw it in there and now has a 128 gigabyte um, SSD, but it's got an old wireless in adapter. So I could, if I really wanted to put more money into it, which I'm not, um, you could pick up one of these USB adapters and bring it up to AC. Um, this card here, if you have a 10th, um, I have to look at the, I, I can't remember if it's ninth or 10th generation I-7. There's two different cards that they make. There's an AX200. Let me see if I can find one here. Well, it's AX200, and then there's the AX201. The only difference between the cards is the AX200 is for any system. Uh, it has all the, the commands and, and everything kind of built into the chip. Um, but the AX201 here, see if it gives me the information here, can only be used with certain Intel chipsets. And it has to be a, um, let's see. I think it's a 10th generation or 9th generation Intel. Um, this card will only work for that. And what it does is the 201 here, it puts a lot of the, the stuff onto the um, machine to do, which makes it more, more efficient, lower powered, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, supposedly it makes it uh, um, faster. Not a whole lot faster, but it's supposed to make it faster. Then this is an AX Wi-Fi 6. And of course, it has been replaced by the AX210 and the AX, um, there's the 200, the A and the AX211. The only difference between the two cards, um, if you're going to buy one, if you can want to swing the extra money, if it's the same price, in this case it's not, um uh well these two are the same price go with this one what i would recommend because it's a 6e so it makes it a little more future proof uh but if if you can get the 200 for ten dollars cheaper you're not going to notice much performance difference now say you have an older machine you don't have to fire it up so i have this one or I had this one, I recently sold it. This is an old um, Inspiron 17R7720 special edition laptop. I bought it brand new in 2012. Um, it's been through many different iterations and um, it has an SSD drive, but you can actually pick up this little card here And it will update a 2012 non-whitelisted machine to uh, Wi-Fi 6, which is really nice. Uh, this is actually faster. This card is actually faster than the uh, LAN card that's built into the, it only has 100 LAN card, uh, LAN, uh, LAN network connection. This is actually faster than that. Um, the only way I can exceed it is using a uh, USB adapter. And then you can go through here. They got various cards that you can add to desktops and stuff. I don't want to step on Ed's toes too much here. These are mainly, these would have to go in the, uh, so say you got that little mini PCI Express plug on your um, desktop and you have no idea what to use it for. Guess what you can use it for? You can use it for this Wi-Fi. You can also get uh, 
um, desktop drives, M2 connectors, adapters that'll plug into the same thing. Um, so just some more updates for you there. Okay, so of course we have USB 3. Um, you can actually put USB 3 into a desktop tower using an old PCI slot and give your computer, uh, old, that old machine, a USB 3 connection. Again, it's going to be limited by the bus speed, but you'll have capability of using a 3.0 connector. Here's a little history on USB. I found it a little fascinating. This is wiki, so take it as it is. Um, so USB was first introduced, according to this, in 1996. It was limited to 12 megabytes. Then it had 1.1 uh, in 1998. It used the Type A connector or the Type B. The Type B you probably recognize through uh, for printers and stuff. Um, then you had USB 2.0 and a revised 2.0, which went up to 400 megabits um, using the same connector. Now they have USB 3.0 and 3.1, which uses the blue one, as you can see here. And then 3.2 is out and it's 20 gigabytes and USB 4, which I have not seen a USB 4. I've seen a 3.2, but I've not seen a USB 4 machine. Uh, type C, as you can see, this is what's um, becoming the standard for a lot of it because you can do so much with this data transfer, power transfer, the whole nine yards. Um, it's what most cell phones use now. And uh, thanks to Europe, um, uh, Apple, the, there's only two Apple devices right now that use um, USB C. Uh, but now, um, uh, thanks to Europe, all Apple devices are probably going to have USB-C now. You have your mini connector A, your mini connector B, your mini AB, your micro connectors. How many people have broken off these micro connectors? God knows how many times on your phones. Uh, the micro connector uh, super speed, I've never seen one of these. Um, then your micro B connector, that one's really bad about breaking off that little centerpiece there, then your super speed, and then your micro AB and micro AB uh, super speed. Um, I have a couple of external drives that use this kind of connector here, and it's pretty fast. And you're talking USB three speeds here. So that's kind of the evolution of USB. Okay, RAM. Now, people always ask, right now, believe it or not, uh, DDR5 is now um, becoming, slowly becoming the standard. DDR4 is the most common. Uh, they're starting to sell systems with DDR5 in them now. Um, uh, GPU cards um, uh, are actually, have been using DDR5 for a while, uh, and now they're up to DDR6. Um, so this is a kind of a neat little video that talks about um, uh, how much RAM you need. Can you guys hear this? Shake your head if you hear it. Can you hear it? Can you hear that? I can't. I can't hear his uh, video now. Okay, let me. I started you, uh, hearing it and then it went out. Okay, so that means it's working now. No audio on that. Ed, can you hear it? I paused it. I started hearing it and then it went out. All right, let me see here. Um, oh, shoot. Somebody remind me where I can get the sound on this thing with the video. Uh, I, I think it's in your video section of, uh, 
on your video settings in Zoom. I think you have to share the video. Yeah. It's either in here or in shared sections of your, uh, you know, the Microsoft right. the, the settings. Ah, we'll go on. All right, so let me. All right. So nowadays, um, if you buy a cheap laptop, you're probably going to get about four to eight gigs of RAM. Um, four, usually for the L cheapo cheapos, and then eight for a standard, you know, everyday use kind of machine. And then um, uh, 16 is kind of what gamers use. Um, this particular machine that I have here that I'm talking on right now is maxed out at 16. It's supposedly capable of 32, but when I tried 32 in it, I was getting blue screens. So I don't know if it was the RAM or being in typical HP, being picky of stuff. Um, so I quickly dropped it back down to uh, um, 16. Um, so as you go back with the older machines, um, you're going to run into issues of getting uh, certain amounts of RAM. Um, for example, right now, if anybody's interested, um, I do have eight gigabytes of, in two laptop size sticks, eight gigabytes of DDR2 uh, 800 RAM, which is like ultra rare stuff. Um, I picked it up for an old Dell 19 uh, that went up in smoke. Um, I think the power supply finally died, and I don't feel like paying a bunch of money for another power supply. What era what? is it? Huh? What era is that? Because I've got an old uh, HP uh, that is running on four, and I think its memory's gone bad. Uh, DDR2 memory would probably be, um, I got that thing. It's it's an old um, uh, uh, Core two, Core two Duo processor. That's about so what this about, was. Yeah, like early two thousands. Well, it, I didn't get mine until it wasn't a quad core. It was an i seven, but uh, I don't think it had the quad core. Well, they may have the quad core in there. Most i sevens run DDR three, I believe. This yeah, was I think the you're right. precursor to the i series. Because this was the yeah yeah you're right because it, it's like the the DDR2 I still run DDR2 on one machine. Well, this is DDR2 laptop memory. Right. And I do do have a little thing I think I put on here about the history of RAM. Right. Um, so yeah, you're going to run into like I said you're going to run into trying to max out older machines. Um, because as the older DDR gets, the higher amounts get stupid expensive. Um, that DDR3 32 gigabyte normally runs like two or three hundred dollars for 3,200 gigabytes, but you can get uh, 32 gigs of DDR4, which is one of the most common right now, uh, 3,200 for like a hundred bucks or less. So that kind of gives you a comparison. Whereas the eight gigs, um, I think I paid like a hundred bucks for it. So, I mean, wow. yeah, it's, it's kind of expensive stuff. It's, it's rare. The eight gigs is rare because you got to remember most machines back then kind of topped out at four gigabytes. And, and that, you know, you're that's all I've got it. in this. It, it's an old laptop and that's all I have in it is four gigs. Right. And with it, with it going bad, I think it's like, Hmm, I'm going, hmm, but I'm not sure DDR, I'd have to check. Well, so. check. If you're interested, shoot me an email. Sounds good. Um, so anyways, coming back to this, um, I did find a way, by the way, it seems like uh, Intel or Microsoft is kind of nipping um, these fixes to install Windows 11 on other machines. Uh, they're kind of nipping some of those ways of doing it. Uh, but I did find a way that uh, you remove a certain file in the install 
in the and then you uncheck a couple of boxes when during the install and you can install using the regular install without any registry edits or anything like that it's all done in the in the install now so as long as you have the minimum requirements of a 64 gigabyte processor running one gig four gigs of ram and the couple of gigs of hard drive space you know you can theoretically run windows 11 if you want to go through all that but windows 10 is going to be you know into life's not till 2025 so far um so if you have an older machine that will meet the minimum requirements of windows 10 and if you can pick up that extra memory like the ddr3 or the ddr2 you could probably run windows 10 pretty comfortably on that with eight gigs of ram processor might be a bottleneck um, but you can probably do it um, so 16 gigs right now seems to be the um, like the the top of the line uh, most of these new machines um, you have to read your specs um, if it'll go higher than 16 don't just go by the manufacturer um, you can actually go to some of the um, websites for the ram people and they will tell you if it runs 32 or do your own research um, you can always pick up the RAM from like Amazon, put it in your system. If it boots up to 32 gigabytes, yay. If it doesn't, then send it back. Um, this is kind of telling you here, office productivity, surf the net, streaming, media, broadcasting, coding, editing, and games. Um, when you're doing, and Ed, you probably know about this, happen to do all the videos and stuff, the more RAM you have, the better off you are. Oh yeah, I, I've, I've gone to 32 gigabytes of RAM on two machines and it works so much better than the, I've got two older machines that I, I max out at about, about eight gigabytes and I don't use them for anything but <laughs> writing or something like that. Once, once I got these, the new ones up it's it's like i can still actually i still do the the video edits for this club on the one machine because i've got the old video you know programs on that but um it, it it's so much easier with 16 gigabytes on a machine or with 16 right. to, to 32 32 makes it a lot easier and uh, 16 is it's amazing how much quicker because I moved the one machine from my scanner even onto the, right. the newer right. newer one and everything it's like I'm doing instead of two to three hours when I scan a whole batch it only takes me about an hour or two now so I've cut that time in half for a full <laughs> you know load of 24 pictures at high res and, and something else to consider you know, back in the day when we had shared memory, um, you know, that's kind of evolved a little bit too. Um, the, the, you know, the more RAM you have, you know, for example, I have a, that netbook I was talking about, I had one gig of RAM in it and I bumped it up to two, Ooh. but it used 256 uh, megabytes of that RAM uh, for, um, video. So you take that away from the one gigabyte and you're only running the machine on 700. So and that's, that's where the old machines get, get you logged up because if you've got a four gigabyte card and you've only got eight gigabytes of memory, you're, you're getting eight gigabytes of RAM allocated to your video card and it sucks headspace away from you. So if oh, you yeah. don't have headroom, you're, you're, all of a sudden lot and it was like it's a problem i mean you really need 16 minimum if you're going to have a four gigabyte card if you got a two gigabyte card you could probably do with eight and you're fine yeah that's one of the things that nowadays um if, uh, true gamers use uh systems that um have a dedicated video card built into the laptop along with the the um, gpu uh, CPU processor 
But it's um, still using the shared memory concept. Right. But it so, switches over to, to, to the dedicated video. No, the dedicated video has its own RAM. Right. Um, but it's still sharing. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a weird thing that goes on that Microsoft does because it's, it's shadowing the RAM. So you still are, if, if you have, let's say, an 8 to 12 gigabyte card, you're going to be sucking up 8 to 12 gigabytes of onboard RAM along with that to, right. to mirror it. So you got to understand that's why these people went from just 16 gigabytes to 32, 64, and you can do 128 on some of these main frame motherboards. So it's <laughs> there's a reason right. people are doing it. Right. So anyways, four gigabytes minimum um, for Windows 11. And if you're just surfing the net, you're good. Eight gigabytes for most everyday use, minimal gaming. 16 gigabytes um, is good for most gaming, most games at this time. 32 is on the horizon. Um, now here's a neat little history uh, going back into the evolution. I talk about RAM. The first RAM was a uh, read access memory RAM, was a Williams tube in 1947. Used a cathode ray tube uh, for the memory. All right. And then they went to uh, wow. the, the uh, um, dynamic random access to RAM. And um, the first commercial uh, SD or DRAM was uh, um, kind of in 1966. And then the first commercial was in an Intel 1103, and that was released in 1970. Hmm. And then uh, SD RAM was introduced in 1992. And um, 1988, they went to a 16 bit chip for DDR RAM. And um, I kind of scroll down here a little bit here. Here we go. So, and okay. uh, this is pretty neat. 1963, you had a one bit card uh, that was a by S RAM. 1965, they went 8 bit and then 16 bit and then 64 bit. 1966, they went 16 bit with a bipolar with of the, the SRAM type. And it was pretty much MOSFET and bipolar. And then you kind of went up from there. 1983, 1995, went up to 256 RAM. Then you had uh, your DRAM that kind of started in 1965. This is Wikipedia page, and it pretty much went up to 2001. SD RAM came out in like 1992, and it was pretty much reduced up until 2018 with the DDR4, and they're starting to roll out the DDR5. And then you had some SG RAM and HB RAM which are still making to this day. So this kind of gives you, um, let's see, DDR2, uh, Ed was like 2006, 2003 for the DDR2. So like I oh, said, yeah. early 2000. Yeah, yeah. The laptop I had, I bought it in 2010, but I'm, it, it was probably from 20, 2006 or before. So, because I usually buy cheap and, you know, older stuff. So it, it might still have a DDR2. I'd have, I, I still have to get in there to figure it out because I think it's more, well, see, there's a 2006 DDR2 that's still being used there. So if it's 2008, there's still an LP DDR2. So you never know. Yep, just gotta oh. crack it open and take a look. Yep, I've had it open a few times. <laughs> I don't know where the anomaly is coming from because I keep on getting anomalies when I bring it up. So. Yeah, well, RAM does break down after a while. Okay, I so used it for almost 10 years. So, well, there you go. 
Um, hard drive is a good place to start too, because they do wear out after a while, especially if it's spinner drive. I already have. I already had a hard drive to put in it, and then the whole thing sort of crashed. So I was going to turn it into a Linux machine, and <laughs> hasn't worked. I have. Uh, it sort of all died on me all of a sudden. All right. So to uh, kind of recap here. Um, that was just a, you know, there was some evolution there of the different types of stuff, um, upgrading it and such. And um, the, the three things that I usually like to uh, update when I pick up a laptop to fix up and sell or to use myself is the Wi-Fi card, um, especially if it's an older G or N card, um, because just because of security is a big reason. Um, Speed wise, if you're only running the 100 from the, you know, from um, like Time Warner or something, if you're only running the 100 meg, um, you know, a wireless, wireless N will handle that. Um, well, but for security, you want to go up to an AC or a G card. Um, a spinner drive. Um, like I said, th this machine that I'm talking here had a 5,400 RPM. It didn't even have a 7,200, um, and it was a dog. Uh, so upgrading to an SSD drive um, uh, is a, is will bring new life to your machine. Um, upgrading the RAM, if you can afford it, upgrade to the highest you can. Um, the highest your machine can take and the highest you can afford. Um, and if you just do that, uh, like I said, this machine that I got, and the reason why I got it is because it's special edition Star Wars. I'm showing my geekiness. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was a dog. And it's a, not, a lot nicer machine now just doing those three changes to it. Um, so that's kind of what I got right now. Um, Ed, you ready? I, I, I'm ready. All right, Ed. Go ahead. I, I would, I'm not going to go through the history because you've done a lot of that. You might want to undo your share. There you go. I don't know if I can share here. It says share. Did he make your screen? Your and let's just see if I can. Uh, let's see here now. It says share screen. I'm going to try to do that. Let's see how that does. Okay. Do you, are you guys seeing this, the TPM encryption? Yes, Amazon, yeah. see they're, they're trying to sell cards here. This is sort of an interesting thing. So uh, enable TCPM on your PC. So with, with Windows, what's very interesting about this uh, TPM module, um, it, and this is one reason, you know, we're talking about security here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of certain things, but the more I study this, it's just a way to help keep your machine safer and have less problems, you know, going back through Microsoft that somehow they can tell if, if the TPM has been compromised. So uh, it's, it's not a bad idea. Um, let's see here, I'll go back to here. The one thing that I find in, uh, interesting here is that uh, these, these appear to be some uh, actual cards here, and you can see Amazon remote card compatible with Windows 11 2.0 system dedicated card. So can, can you add them? Uh, it seems like some people are selling them. I will. will I don't know if that's going to be uh, something you can add, do easily or not. This is one thing I have not uh, checked into. But what is interesting is the history of this. And I want to get no wrong. Oops. Hold on. Got a lot of these here. And actually, let before we get into this. Here we go. Here's this. Um, but when you're dealing with the trusted uh, platform module and trying to get yourself into the Windows 7, uh, there's different things that you can do. 
And let's go into here. This this is what like my current system, and it is. I put it together about five years ago, as along with the the newer systems I have. Um, you can see. Let's see here now on on something like this. This is my other setup. This is where I have all my scanning equipment, and the different computers you you see here i've got this is an old system probably somewhere between 2005 and 2008 motherboard and the one on the left here is approximately a 2015. the 2015 has the the tpm 1.2 version already on the machine so if you have that i think this is where you're actually able to upgrade i was not able to get as much information on that as i would like but it's definitely as you can see over here with the amazon cards um it when you do the windows check it's looking for this tpm 2.0 so i'm assuming that this is going to be what's needed um, as I say, I'm sorry I haven't gotten all of this uh, down here, but I was trying to get the pictures transferred today over to the, the PC, and it took me too long to get this done. Um, in in history wise, though, the photos. This is one one area why I'm I'm sort of going into this a little bit more in detail because I have older systems. Um, and you're, I mean, you're talking about uh, one thing that they're going, uh, you can actually, if you have a machine with two gigabytes of RAM, and I've actually have a couple of old machines in that era, and two one gigabyte processors, you can run Windows 11, <laughs> which is... I actually have some. <laughs> this Tiger 2 230 board here, it's actually sort of a, a IBM um, system. You used to be able to buy the Tiger uh, motherboards. You no longer can because IBM uh, sort of bought the company out and quit, made them quit selling these off. But with this machine here, I still had SCSI drives, about two gigabyte, 20 gigabyte SCSI drives <laughs> on these things. This actual machine, I upgraded to a 300 gigabyte drive and it all the SCSI is, the only thing I'm running SCSI on here are the, uh, the CD, the DVD and the, the uh, CD ROMs here which I probably could have done with only two, but it is, if you're having music while you're play, working, it's sort of nice to, to have one dedicated to just playing music. Um, in, and oh yeah, I didn't really get what I wanted here. This is an older machine, something like this, still has the SCSI equipment. Um, you can still get, close to two gigabyte, but I think you're, the max you can do here is either 256 or 500 gigabytes. So something this old, I have, it's a dual Pentium machine, about 200 megahertz, something like that is not going to be usable. <laughs> so the cutoff though is with the, uh, the TPM uh, 1.2 started in about 2015, and I didn't really, uh, let's see if we can actually do uh, a quick look on that. Well, actually, I think it may even be on here. Um, let's go even to the 1.2 real quick. Hey, Ed. And, Ed. yeah. While you're looking that up, um, <coughs> make sure you look at your motherboard manufacturer to see if those chips will work. Yes. Some of those uh, chips the, are motherboard specific. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. And you will, yeah, th this is one reason I was going to go into like what you were doing with Newegg, but I was going to do this with a different uh, thing. Um, how to change 1.2 to TPM 2. Point BIOS fix solution. So here we go. You can actually do it. Um, 
And from what I understood with the compatibility, if you're willing to do the 1.2 directly, um, it goes all the way back to almost 2005. So you should have something like this into your, in your system all the way up to motherboards that go all the way back to 2005. And if you're dealing like I am with two older machines and I do a lot of writing, I don't really need something, you know, for the video editing and everything else with the 16, 32 megabytes of RAM, eight, eight gigabytes of RAM as above board memory is quite sufficient. And uh, the 1.2, chips uh the way i understood it that there was as long as you have this on and you have to go into your bios so i wasn't able to get the videos up but what you actually have to do is go into your bios and turn this on so it's it's a it's a little bit harder to do than one would think it's not something that you just you know, say, okay, yeah, let's let's do this. This actually runs off your BIOS. So you physically have to get in, you have to turn this on, and um, it, it's something that you're, if you wanna run Windows 11 and have something be good for the next 10 to 12 years that we have to do research on, uh, I wish I had a, had, um, knew if the 2.0 was required or the 1.2 the way i read the microsoft that as long as you have the 1.2 engaged you you at least have something to go on and it, you, you may be able to uh, upgrade your your computer because things that are obviously much older and you maybe you could tell us this gary so i'm not okay sure. so with the the 1.2 um Microsoft, you can actually go into the registry and make a couple of registry edits, which is kind of what you were showing. And, and Microsoft kind of signs off on that and says, okay, we'll accept this. Uh, we prefer okay. you not to, but we'll accept it. But you have to go in and make those changes. Now, that being said, the, the funny thing is um, TPM 2.0 actually goes back to the i6 processors. Um, but yet, Windows will not. My wife's uh, Surface Book One has TPM 2.0, but Windows will not install. Windows 11 will not install on it because it's not a eighth generation or the Microsoft Surface um, special seventh generation processor. I only have two seventh generations that'll run it. Um, oh, however. Okay. That being said, I am talking to you on a Windows 11 machine right now with an i6 processor in it. Uh, Windows has actually come out with, or somebody has found a, the, the, the way to get around that. The Dell machine that I would just showed, the massive one, it's a third generation uh, i7 and it's running Windows 11. Um, they, you go in and, um, you modify the uh, uh, install file, and then you uncheck a couple of boxes, and it will install just like normal, and runs just fine. The caveat is, Microsoft tells you, you can do these things. However, if it causes your machine to self-destruct in three seconds after installing Windows 11, you're on your own. If it voids any warranties, you're on your own. If um, uh, in, in, and so forth and so on. Um, the only issue that I've run into um, is some drivers for Windows 11. However, if there's a Windows 10 driver, it will install. If there's a Windows 7 driver, it will install. Uh, for most devices, I have only found a, I have not found a workaround for any machine so far. Now. I have only installed them on iProcessing machines. I have not installed them. Oh, I take that back on one AMD A8 system. I have installed Windows 11 on. Um, so if you do this, you know, Microsoft will say good for you, but you know, they, and there is a possibility that you will not be able to get updates in the future. So far that is not an issue. 
And I have well, actually seen know. where somebody installed uh, a Windows 11 on an old 64-bit, one of the first 64-bit processors that exceeded the, the um, minimum requirements and with the minimum amount of RAM, like an old Pentium machine or something crazy, crazy ancient device and, and they installed it and it ran it. Wouldn't well, that's, it, it ran it. Well, that's why I'm going back because I have like a the 1.3 or 1.5 Pentium 3s with two gigabytes of RAM. And that technically is all you have to have is the two gigabytes of RAM, right? Mm, one little caveat, it has to be a 64-bit processor. Oh yeah, well, I think those were, weren't they? The Pentium 3s or were they only 30? They may have only been 32, you might they be They were right only there. 32. Yeah. Because you, you had Windows 64, but that was more for Windows XP 64, but that was more there, for server machines. There, the might, there might be, yeah, there might be some server chips that, that, would, that would run it. That, you might have that right. Um, well, anyway, what I, the one thing that I wanted to go through is sort of like what you were doing here is uh, trying to, you know, build your own computer. You think it's all that, that hard, but it really isn't. Um, and this is what I'm trying to show here, though. Actually, this all filled this in for me. I was, I was hoping to do this from the get-go, but if you go to uh, Micro Center's custom PC builder, if you noticed on the, um, you know, uh, section here, well, it's, it's gone now, but under where you start looking for parts, you can actually um, see computer products. You go to computer parts and you can, you got a choice of all your different things and you can go through and pick this up on your own, figure out what you want and hunt and peck. But the nice part about what they've done right now is they've given you a nice little way to um, pick everything right up front. So now you go and you can actually say, CPU, I want this one. And what I wanted to do is show you how to do this, but it's already loaded everything for me. Um, Cause it's obviously remembering where that I was here before. Okay. Um, and actually it shouldn't have, cause I've even this is, is wrong because the last time I did it, it was a, uh, I, I did it with a, oh gosh, what was it? A, uh, let's see here now. It, it was a um, AMD motherboard that I wanted to do. And I could clear the build, but I'm gonna, uh, just for time's sake, sort of leave this here. If you notice the total build here is 2,545.70. Uh, now you can you can go high, you can go low. I sort of went, I wanted to build a machine because if you're gonna build on your own, I really think you should do something that's not gonna be, you're not cutting corners if you can help it. Right now, video cards, you can't help but cut corners because you're either buying a, a, a video card that's way over your head or you're, you're getting something that's so bad you don't want it. So, the hard part now is to find a video card where you're not paying too much money. Uh, but here we, we start out, they ask you what processor you want. So I, I well, I actually know this went to the, the i5. And I've decided against the i5. I know that I want an Intel. I don't want necessarily an i9 because the i9 to me was just enough that... Um, It's too, it's too much of a processor, but the i7, now the i7 to me is sort of the, the nice medium. You're saving about from the 399 to the 299, you're saving yourself a hundred bucks. And you'll see why in the long run, this kind of thing can be, can be a nice thing. Um, okay, now you're, you've done this, the ASUS, the 590 board, I know that is a good thing. It's the, uh, the 120 box processor. It's a 120 LGA socket. So we have that. Um, 
in the memory, we could go in here and try to change this. Now, the interesting part about this, this is where you have to sort of watch something like this. If you're gonna let them help you, you still have to pay attention to the DDR4-3200 because most of the CPUs are running the 3200 line. I find that if you go off of the memory and the CPU being of sort of lined up, uh, you're going to run into some issues. It's not that you ha they have to be exactly the same, but I would recommend it. Um, it's not something that, you know, you can say, no, yeah, I've done that and it works. And it's like, I'm, I'm not going to argue with anybody. I'm not going to say you can't do it, but I would not recommend do it. I just got a message. Okay. Sorry, cl I clicked something. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, um, there's a, a chat question that I can kind of answer here that's kind of building on, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Okay, so AMD Ryzen are pretty good processors as far as I know. I'm hearing a lot of good things. Um, some of them are right. actually outperforming the I processors. Right. Um, something to consider when you're building um, a, uh, a system like you're talking about. I just did a bunch of research on this. So with the um, I processors, you can get away if it costs for 3200, you could probably get away with putting 2600 in it and not notice a bit of difference with the i4 processor. Uh, let's let's not get into that, okay. I Gary, because let me just keep going on this because I'm, okay, I'm just ahead, sorry, I'm trying sorry. to get more I'm trying to get more into what you want to do. I you know it's like if you're trying to save money here, I'd go to 16 gigabytes at least uh, 32 to 64. You can you can spend more, but uh, what I what I try to do is look for memory that has heat sinks on it because as a gamer I've burned up some memory playing games so I I try to do heat sinks on there I don't necessarily think you have to have uh, uh, fans on the heat on the memory itself but because I've done that on a few machines but I do think you need to have heat sinks so I I look for the the Corsair or something that's good at the time and people trust it, you can go down to Micro Center and ask these guys. Uh, and, you know, I'm gonna say 32 gigabytes, 3200 G skill, I'm gonna select that, okay? Because I'm trying to get through this and try to show you how you can do this fairly easily. Um, okay, now we got the memory, we got the, the, the motherboard and we have the memory. Right, there are CPU, memory, and motherboard. Those are the three main things. Um, with the Corsair, uh, you, you're going to want a nice um, thing. I'm not going to change this because everybody can buy a, a, a Corsair, or you know, buy a case depending on what you like. I, my, I, the favorite case I have actually has a, a, a quick change slot for, um, so you can hot swap your backup and you know have extra memory added to your cp or to your case uh, you got to look for this i have not found it since then but i did get it down here at micro center so it's it, you, there's different things you can look for uh, for different reasons on the case but i it, most people want it to match their environment so you either want to go with one color or another so find a case you like usually do not have the power supplies in it. And with myself, if you're a gamer or, you know, doing video editing, I wouldn't go less than a 750 watt. Sometimes you're, you're going to uh, an 850. I would not go as low as a 650 unless they've got uh, certain uh, available things like a 500 watt here. You're gonna see, um, does this actually have uh, graphics connectors. It got two six pin and a two pin. So you actually have it on this. So it, it's, if you're putting in two video cards, it's one thing you want to make sure that your power supply's got at least two two six pins. And with the the plus two uh, makes an eight pin, so that your graphics cards can work properly, especially if you're running dual video cards. Uh, it's not something that you have to do, but um, 
I, I like the 750s usually. Um, I've stayed with the, the Corsair usually. There's a 1000 watt there. The Asus I found are good. So it just depends on what you want. I've got this in the way here. You probably can't see that, but um, let's see, Thor, that's a 1200 watt. Uh, you know, you're, you can get into these things that you don't really need. Uh, the power the power spec 650 is okay. I think here we go, the 750. I, I sort of like staying a little extra power like this. Um, so it gives you a chance to look at, at stuff. You still want to come down here. You got the four uh, graphics connectors of four, six, and plus two pins. So I'm going to say this is my this is going to be my choice here. Uh, and we'll let's select this. Keep going. I don't want to spend too much time here. Um, and like you, uh, I, I'm glad you you went through the. Um, all the SSD drives, because I'm still sort of a fan of uh, other, see now they're, they're warning you here, uh, limited availability. The nice thing about what uh, is happening with this plant that's gonna go over here in Ohio, um, we can start getting video cards. <laughs> right now we're, we're not getting video cards very easily. Uh, and you will find that What's interesting about this is you're you're getting into problems of is it around? Do they have it? Availability, a 16 gigabyte DDR6. Okay. Now, 16 gigabyte card is one thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars. Do you need that? Probably not, unless you're doing some very high end work. It's not something that I would recommend. Um, eight gigabyte card, here you are, 469. That's still probably well over what most people need to run 4K video and to edit it. Um, I'm really, I found I have uh, four, four gigabyte cards that work very nice. But um, you're, you know, if you, if you go in and try to find something like that right now, there's just nothing available. And as you can see here, they, uh, the other day when I, I came in here, there were like eight cards were down to one, two, three, four, five cards total. They got an eight gigabyte card here for only $5.99. The eight gigabyte card for $4.69 is probably fine. I, I would not. <laughs> go over that but this is where what's killing us right now is not having an availability to chipsets and um we're getting we're this kind of thing is what's killing us on building our own pcs you almost are cheaper to go with what people are putting in for you and they're not necessarily going to give you a good card but this 469 card i've <laughs> the power color i've found are good cards so, you know, I'm you sorry, know one of the reasons why the cards are so uh, limited right now, because everybody's using them for data mining. Right, correct. But the it's still, it's not just that, it's you can't get them. They're, China is eating, using their own stuff and they're not sending it to us. So, <laughs> and there's a reason they're doing that, because they're data mining us. So it's like if they if you're going to be doing some serious work they want some serious money out of here 14.99 and 15.99 and 15.69 for three of the different cards that are left on this thing you're paying at least $600 for something you really don't need <laughs> and it's not that i'm you know i paid $500 for a video card and this is like back in the early 90s. And within a year, the thing was worth about 50 bucks. <laughs> and I just, uh, seeing what's happening in this area drives me a little nuts. But I'm going to select this. This is the, the video card that I, I want to 
you know, get in for th for this right now, uh, just to get rid of this and to explain to you that you you, you know if you want two of them you can. Uh, I would wait until you know this war is is over, but uh, it's well over what most people need for even doing 4K. I mean, if you're you some people might want something else, but. Um, I went with the Samsung EDI. I didn't get as as heavily into it as, as you did, Gary. Uh, so this is one area that I really appreciate you going into how fast some of the new cards are. I'm I just went to a regular SSD, and I was wondering why these things are getting so cheap. But this is this is why. I mean, a five twelve or a one terabyte running um, your system is not a it's not a bad way to go. I for just putting the operating system on, I find this saving some money might be just a smart way to go about it. Um, as I I was not uh, well. Let's see here. Now you do two of these for upgrading update quantity. Oh yeah, here we go. The five twelve. I'm gonna just put this into the trash can. Um, We'll we'll leave that as it as it is. Uh, let's look into the uh, select an M2 MVE, and so now let's get into a bigger drive here. Uh, let's get a two terabyte drive here. It's only two two nineteen. One terabyte is only one nineteen. Maybe that's a way to go. Um, if you need a lot more room, you can go here. And I was wondering why we were not getting the the hard drives. I sort of like the old hard drives myself, so I don't know that I'm really a fan of these solid straight drives yet. They're really fast, but for doing video, you don't need something to be that fast. Um, and you're, you're getting into a much higher cost on here. I'm not quite sure why everybody's going to this um, for speed, because actually doing 4K videos are quite fine on a on a um, regular drive because of running all the compression that you're running right now. So it's not necessary for doing video. It's probably necessity when because there's a lot of people that are streaming three and four lines of video at one time for security systems, and I really think that's one reason that this kind of a drive, like a, a four eight terabyte drive might be something that you want to get if you've got a, a security system at home and you're trying to record all of your hard drives, all the stuff on a local system, it's probably something you might need and might want. Um, because now all of a sudden, see, this is what I was going to do, the Seagate Barracuda, for only 46 bucks. You've got a Seagate 2 terabyte Barracuda and you can go all the way up to about six to eight uh, terabytes on some of these old style uh, hard drives. I find these are very reliable. You'll see, you got a, a four terabyte purple surveillance, and they're getting energy uh, efficient. So, I mean, it's why you're paying for the difference. The black performance on the four terabyte here is only 104. I mean, that's a lot of hard drive. Uh, very nice something to to put in and who has the blu-ray and wants to do this well some people might have a, a game or a movie they want to watch or broadcast from their computer onto their tv and so in the long run i still think that you know putting one of these in is a good idea cpu cooling now this uh, let's see here now. It says uh, select thermal. Please select either a water cooling kit or a heat sink, sink option. And I don't know why that's not come. Oh, here we go. See, now I've, I've gotten the master cooler. Now, this is the one thing that you want to think of when you're doing um, this. The reason I went to this particular unit is that it has uh, an ability to the Landly, right here, it has an ability for adapting to your AMD um, CPU and to the 1700 
uh, socket. There's a new 1700 socket motherboard that's out there. And uh, this group is actually, you can look it up, but you can actually get an adapter running from this unit right here, though, the head that attaches to your CPU. The fans actually can attach to the top of your, um, you know, and this is why you don't want to put things on your current cases because people are venting out the top with these fans. So you put this on the, on the top of the unit, this goes on the CPU, and now you've got an ability to keep your CPU cool no matter what you're doing. So we're gonna select this because I've done some, some, uh, some studying of this. I know that you have to actually be able to see if I go back to here, let's, and we can look at um, this. Uh, it's sh actually showing you the motherboard. We, um, I wanna go in and let's say I wanna change everything here on the motherboard. And I go from the LGA 200 here to the 1700, right? Can I get this to change? Come on. It's not wanting to change right now because I've got the other CPU. It may not be letting me change easily. Um, but if you go in here, you can actually, it, when you start this out completely, you go to the LGA uh, 1700, these are fairly new chips and motherboards, so there's no heat sinks or coolers right now, <laughs> or very few that are, are going to adapt in that. One um, cooler that I just showed you is the one that will adapt, will change. So it's, it's this is what you're sort of wanting to stay with. Well, let's go here. Let's just, I remember the 590 is sort of what I was looking for. I, and as you can see here with the motherboards, you can go into a higher cost or lower cost. Um, I tried to stay in that. I, about the same amount I'm spending on my CPU as I put into the motherboard. It's not a rule you have to follow, but if you have a particular motherboard that you have and you're trying to find a CPU to match it, you know, go to the fastest CPU you can necessarily or if you're, that you can afford. Um, uh, you, that would be a fine way to, to go about things. But if you are looking for both the CPU and the motherboard at the same time and have a choice, um, you know, the 1700 is the newer style, so probably you're, you're going to have the newer chips, Windows 11 compatible. The 1200 is still going to have the TP uh, 2.0 available. So these, these two motherboards are your first choice. Uh, the AM4 uh, is one thing you're going to want if you are going to an AMD motherboard. And this is why I would, you know, it's like if you're, let's, Let's go in here and take a quick look at this because right now I'm already, by the additions I've done, I've gone up here 3,918 bucks. Well, that's pretty expensive for a computer and most of us are not going to spend that kind of money. But if you think about it, uh, now you got to get a video uh, camera and uh, a way to, you know, handle Zoom meetings uh, and you're going to have to find a way to connect the, the, the camera properly. But this is not a bad expense to go through to have a really nice system at home. Um, yeah, you're probably going to have to pay it off. You're not going to just go out and put four grand down on a uh, on the computer because and this is you're adding tax to this, so you're adding whatever this is. Um, but I'm going to clear this build real quick just to show you um, when you go in start custom well see you can do a base system or custom pc i i try to go to the select custom pcs section and when you go into your amd as you were saying the ryzen eight core uh six core amd ryzen eight core usually the eight cores have got 16 cores underneath them like the i9s um, our listing 16 cores, AMD, uh, Ryzen 
Vermeer's are, are listing the 12 cores. I'm looking for the 16 core AMD. Here we go, 16 core. Oh, oh that's all 679. So let's pick up that and select it. And so we're starting out with a really nice CPU. <laughs> now we got to select the motherboard. Uh, and you can see this does come up. Um, hey, Ed. Yeah? We're, we're starting to run a little late here. Okay. Well, but I just wanted to show you that it's, it's easy to clear the whole thing out. You can start over if you need to, and you want to figure out, okay, what is you going to be your um uh am4 select motherboard here 449 it's a little bit cheaper than the other one but it's it tells you the ddr4 all the way up to to 300 i need to go back and look at the cpu of the memory type but it runs on a certain frequency so in the long run, the one thing you want to do, as I say, is match your CPU, your motherboard, and your memory. So now you've got to come back and you've got to choose your memory, keeping this in mind, right? Uh, your DD, this is showing it's still running the DDR4. You can run the 3200, so you have the memory that you had before would still work if you still had it in your in your pack. And so... You know, you're either going to have to decide, do you want to run 16, 32, 64, 128, and how much money are you willing to do for having a very nice PC? And, you know, it's very, you know, you're going to save over buying from HP or any of these other guys that are doing it because they're going to cut corners somewhere, whether it be on your video card uh, or something else. So this is the one reason I still like to build my own PCs. You can find a good motherboard that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg and a CPU that's not going to cost you quite that much because you, you can stay in that three to $400 range. And this is pretty much where I'm going to leave off here because you did enough on the history and the memory and the Wi-Fi. Uh, one thing I the, what that you're doing that I, I don't do, I, I wire up almost all my computers. I really do not do all the Wi-Fi stuff. So I, I didn't do anything along that line. But being, right. being a, a laptop, it, you do have a tendency to, to want the Wi-Fi. So I understand. Right. Okay. Uh, any quick questions for, from anybody? Okay, one quick thing I want to add in with the AMD versus the Intel real quick is like his board, he showed where the RAM, you have the different choices in RAM. Uh, all, with the AMD processors, you want to go with the minimum recommended RAM. So if it recommends 3200, you should stick with that because uh, you get more bang for your buck, especially with the share video. Anyways, um, by the way, Gladdy, as I'm doing this other stuff, uh, um, uh, Eric is with me, my mind blanked. So make sure he's added into the, the uh, door prize, please. All right, so um, rolling on. Uh, Peter, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Okay, How Peter, go doing? ahead. You wanted to do some speaking about the, the computer museum and some updates with that yeah. and some other things. Go okay. ahead. Um, well, minutes. we have a, um, a request for, uh, what is it, qualifications from the city of Dayton. The deadline is February 17th at 3 p.m. at the city of Dayton. And basically what we need to do is tell the city what we can do. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean this is for the Gem City Ice Cream Building. This does not necessarily mean that uh, that uh we well we, we can't afford the building we'd have to get a, a a lot more money to be sure but uh by at least putting our interest in what we would do with that building that increases our chance of being in the building uh that is owned by somebody else so there is that possibility okay. uh what we're um uh 
I have a van update and I can show you some pictures. And just a second here, I uh, had this all set up and then I lost it. Uh, hold on, let me go back here. And share screen. Suzette and her partner, Roy, Suzette's been a member uh, with our organization for some time, Suzette uh, de Guzman. Um, she uh, and her partner have donated this van. Can you see the picture of the van? Everybody see it? Yes, nod. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So we, we have this van donated. It seats in the back. It'll seat 10 and the two in the front. I'll show you a picture of the inside in just a moment. That's another a picture of the outside. This is the inside. So before on the left hand side, four in the back, and then two on the right hand side behind the racks. As you can imagine, it is a van, a shuttle van, a shuttle type van that is used uh, to shuttle people from uh, motels to the airport. And uh, I've ridden in these quite a few times myself. Uh, plus, it, uh, in addition to the 10 that it'll seat in the back, it'll seat two in the front. This is the back of the van. As you can see, it needs some uh, body work. Some, uh, it's got some rust spots right around the windows. These windows do not open, but, it's, uh, but that's uh, necessary to, to get some work done. This is a picture of the request for qualifications uh, that the city has requested, city of Dayton has requested from us. We need some assistance with that. And I'm gonna go, I don't need to show you any more pictures right now. So I'm gonna get out of here, I think, somehow. Stop share, okay, that'll, that'll do it. Okay. Uh, and, uh, it is a 2005 Dodge Sprinter van 3500 with a Mercedes diesel engine. And um, uh, Suzette and Roy's uh, uh, maintenance person is looking at the van now. They, uh, he's removed the battery, he has the keys to the van. He's gonna check it out for us. Uh, eventually we're gonna need some tires. I say eventually, I, I think it'll probably uh, make it to a, uh, a tire shop, but I wouldn't uh, count on uh, much more than that, uh, assuming that the engine runs and, uh, and their maintenance man is going to be working on that. Uh, so we're going to need a volunteer to do body work on, uh, on the vehicle. Uh, and we will need a place to store the van for long term. Uh, uh, Suzette and Roy have uh, allowed us to store the van short term at its present location, which is in Englewood. Um, now the possibilities for the van, what we could do with the van, we could move exhibits to museum outreach events. Um, and uh, the schedule to be confirmed is about 10 more events for this year, as many as 10 more events for this year. Uh, now it, could be, it would be more obviously if it weren't for COVID. Uh, those uh, Events need to be confirmed, and again, because of COVID, I think uh, people are uh, not ready to jump at uh, commitments yet. But uh, Stephen is, um, has uh, said that he has made arrangements to, uh, uh, or at least made a proposal to show uh, our computer museum products and to talk about our computer museum uh, as many as 10 times yet this year. Uh, one of the things that I've been interested in doing with this van is a field trip to the Voice of a Museum, Voice of America Museum near Mason, Mason, Ohio. I understand that's quite a thing. And uh, I think it would be something for us to work with. If we have enough people interested in that, uh, and uh, please, uh, um, if we had a survey, of course, we'd address that in the survey. But if we had uh, enough people interested in just uh, chat with me, if you're online or uh, give uh, Gladdy the information, I fear at our uh, uh, TJ Chubbs location. Um, now we're gonna need some more volunteers in addition to uh, a volunteer to work on the vehicle, body work or maintenance work uh, to a greater level than what uh, 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 Suzette and Roy's uh, maintenance guy will do. Um, 
we need muscle to move move furniture. They are donating furniture to us, and uh, they uh, we may be able to get the use of a van, but uh, but we have furniture that needs to be moved from one uh, area of a building to another area of a building. We will need cr climate controlled space to consolidate and store and inventory our computer museum exhibits. Now that's uh, as for as much as three years. Until we find a permanent location for our museum, we anticipate being able to do that by the by the year that the DMA is 50 years old. Um, it uh, DMA will be 60. I'm sorry, 46. DMA will be 46 this coming April. Um, we need a number crunching person to help with the uh, request for uh, qualifications, uh, and uh, we will need volunteers to staff museum exhibits, there's a chance that we can set up a, uh, a short-term exhibit at various locations around town, but we need people to help and just staff the booth. I don't believe we're gonna have a tech fest this year and uh, it's still questionable whether we're gonna have a make it event at uh, Carillon Park this year, but, uh, but those 10, uh, as many as 10 uh, type exhibits uh, that I mentioned earlier do not include either one of those. So it's something uh, apart from either of those. Um, Stephen has uh, been adding some uh, YouTube videos onto uh, the DMA's YouTube channel. And uh, uh, also, uh, Judy Tallur of APCUG has inquired about uh, this presentation, the presentation we had tonight being added to their, uh, uh, as, a, as a separate event, being added live to their Wednesday workshops. And uh, it's quite informative, and I and I appreciate the, what you all have said. Uh, educated me, that's for sure. There is a YouTube channel video about the Gem City Ice Cream Building located at our YouTube channel, the DMA's YouTube channel, linkable from the front page, thanks to uh, uh, Mark Camden, linkable from the front page of our website uh, to our YouTube channel. Um, it is APC, the APCUG has uh, information about Data Privacy Week. This is Data Privacy Week. And uh, there's some things uh, that, uh, that I'm concerned about on data privacy, having uh, had my identity stolen at least twice. So um, uh, if you need any information or would like information, uh, just uh, put your name and address in the chat. Uh, area on our website or on uh, this is a zoom or leave a note for uh, Gladdy and she'll uh, email me and I'll uh, uh, let you uh, send you a set of links that Judy Tulur of APCUG has sent me. If you would like to uh, state your interest in the uh, computer museum, uh, you can donate to, to the DMA through the Dayton Foundation and there's a link at the bottom of the front page, uh, thanks to Mark, of uh, the um, uh, uh, leading to the uh, DMA needs page. And on the DMA needs page, there's a, a link to um, how you could donate to, to the DMA through the Dayton Foundation. In the box, in the big box on the page furnished by the Dayton Foundation, be sure to let, note your interest, whether it be computer museum or scholarships, if you choose to donate to the DMA. Uh, you will get an acknowledgement from the Dayton Foundation. Uh, thank you letter uh, for tax purposes, et cetera. Uh, you could donate on that page through your credit card, or if you choose, you could send uh, checks to the DMA directly and just put in the memo what your interest is. Now, hopefully your interest uh, uh, in donating to us is not for door prizes. If that becomes our significant purpose for being, uh, a significant purpose for being, then our um, 501c3 status uh, might become in jeopardy. Uh, so we are an educational organization. That is our focus. Um, also, just tonight, as we were trying to get connected at uh, TJ Chumps, I found out from the uh, TJ Chumps IT person that uh, we can run a wire to our meeting so we don't have to fiddle with Wi-Fi for our um, uh, main uh, camera and uh, 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 well, a computer link to the internet. So um, uh, now we'd still have to plug uh, into that device 
into that laptop uh, for the uh, pictures and the sound, but uh, we, at least it can have a wired internet, which will be, I think, a lot more reliable. So we just need uh, volunteers to run cat five, well, six or whatever cables from, uh, from their router and their router, by the way, I found out tonight is totally independent from their business. So they have a customer service, uh, a customer channel, and they have a business channel. We would be on the customer channel, obviously. Uh, any questions? Uh, I'll be happy to entertain the questions. Otherwise, uh, please put your information in the Zoom chat. And um, uh, that's all for now. Thank you for your hey, time, Gary. You, I appreciate it. Yep. All right. So because time constraints here, we're going to kind of cut some of the things short that we normally do. Uh, Gladys, you want to go ahead and do the door prize or? Yeah, I guess I could do that. Okay. Well, keep in mind, we started late too. So. Right. Yeah, a couple of minutes, not much. What, uh, Gary, what about the guy that's with you? Yeah, uh, Eric. Yeah. You have him. Gladys, did you add him? Oh, no, I did not. So. Yeah. Could you, would you please? Eric, do you want to be added? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, while she's doing that, let me go ahead and, and do a little bit of uh, it's, it's time done. fill here. It's done. We're he's ready. In, he's in there. Okay. Now, can we see the prizes? I, uh, I see a mouse. You're fading in and out there. Yeah. Can Mark turn off the background so we can see the prizes better? Maybe that would help. Hi, oh, buddy. Man. Now we're seeing you, I think. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, now it's but There we go. Well, just put it really close to the camera, Gladdy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> or just go to do, go to your own computer, maybe. Yeah, maybe I should start doing it on my own computer. We have three prizes. We have headphones. Oh. I see. <laughs> there you go. Tag on wireless headphones. There you go. Pure sound. Set background. Yeah. And we've got a gamer's, it's actually a gamer's mouse. It's I'm using that mouse. I'm using that mouse and it's neat. It lights up like a Christmas tree. It's a pretty nice mouse. It's got a little fan inside that keeps your hands dry. Yeah, it is corded, but it's a good mouse. Well, gamers, good gamers, mice are corded. Okay, the third one, let's see if we can get this on. Fire stick. Fire stick, yes. Okay. So, headphones, gamer mouse, fire stick. Let's see. I'm going to pull them tonight. First one, somebody's here. Uh, five, seven, six. The last three numbers are five, seven, six. Five, seven, six. You got your choice, Gary. That's a good mouse, Gary. Supposed to be good headphones too. I can't speak about the headphones. I can speak about the mouse though. Okay. Gary, would you pick another one? <laughs> All right. The next one is Eric. <laughs> I'll take the headphones. Uh, you got a mouse or a fire stick? Gary, oh, oh. Uh, I'll take the mouse. Okay. It's a good yeah. mouse. I use it, and it's real pretty. Okay. Mm. You can s download the software and change the colors, and uh, it's pretty responsive. You can go in and change the settings, so if you barely tap it, it'll shoot across the screen, oh. or you can turn it down so it barely moves. Uh -huh. it's, it's kind of Bruce, you've got a fire stick. Bruce got a fire stick. Yay, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Woo. 
Thank you very much. All right, let me do a quick gander here and see if there's anything in the know. Before uh, we go any further, I want to thank again um, uh, Suzette and Roy for uh, their generosity and uh, uh, willingness to donate both furniture and truck to us. And um, uh, yes. we appreciate that very much. You're welcome. Yeah, Roy, thanks, we, Suzette. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. More than welcome. We all need right, to guys. find a place to put all this stuff. We need to like get serious about this uh, museum. If, even if we're not going to go into the other building, we sort of need something to think of here. Yeah, That's we're working on that behind the scenes. I know. Well, uh, same here. What's the next move on the museum? Well, right now well, we have an RFQ, which we have to submit. Uh, and uh, anybody who has any experience with that, uh, you're... Uh, Participation would be greatly welcome. I'm not we actually person. need somebody from to do a good job. We probably should have somebody from outside the organization do it. That way, we're we're not, you know, trying to. Well, we could have somebody in the organization. It's just uh, we need uh, we need somebody to do it. Basically, uh, I've 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 done. Uh, um, reports like this not exactly like this not an rfq but uh, uh we just need somebody that could crunch some numbers for us basically goodbye well, tj chumps and yep. if anybody needs any uh, uh <laughs> okay if you want to call me tomorrow or any day uh i don't when and uh let me know specifically i might be able to help you i don't know but i i deal in a lot of real estate and investment oh. Me. So I'd be happy to make any contribution that I can there, and but I'd need more specific uh, questions as to what what answers. What are you looking for? And well, you well, I'll tell you what. Thank you, Roy. I appreciate that offer. I'll tell you what. If we could, uh, I'll uh, I'll send to. Uh, I think I have Suzette's uh, email address. I'll send it to um, uh, the uh, uh, City of Dayton's request for. Uh, uh, whatever RFQ, whatever that stands for. I but, saw. Uh, yeah, I'll send it. I'll send it. At least uh, that'll give us a start, and uh, I'll follow up with a phone call tomorrow if that's okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for your job. Yeah, my number. Uh, I have Suzette's number. I don't have yours. If you could put it in chat, this is going to be posted uh, on the internet, so we don't we don't want right. you to get a hundred calls. I get enough of them. Already. Yeah, direct message. Okay. Use a direct message on the sure. chat. We, right. don't post, we don't post any of our chats uh, online. Okay. Right. Okay, guys. Um, do we have any other questions or anything? I know the TJ Chump group has kind of left. Yeah, we should mention the EPCA presentation workshop tomorrow on yep. Chromebooks and SnapSpeed editing on the Chromebooks. And yeah, I've seen that. That's pretty decent. 30 tonight. If you... All right. Thank you, Mike. Anything else? All right, guys. Well, um, the meeting, uh, the next um, meeting for the board is, let me look at the calendar real quick. It's not next week, but the week after. So it's almost two weeks away. It's not this coming Monday. It's the Monday after. Right. Yeah, the 7th. It's the 7th. Right. All right, guys. And it'll be a um, Zoom meeting, Zoom only. Right. On that. So if anybody's, uh, I'll post it uh, on the uh, meetup. And if anybody's interested, they're welcome to attend. All right. Well, if that's it. Um, yep. Good meeting. Thanks, guys. Bye. Y'all have a good